I'm not a, usually a fan of scatological humor, but there's a very funny story about uh, you taking your sister-in-law's little dog. In Toronto, you have to scoop up the poop. And uh, the story, I don't, you know, it's funny, other people have pointed out this scatological theme. And I said, well, how many people have pets in this city? You know, and we've all had to deal with this sort of thing. But, uh, yeah, I almost got a ticket because taking my sister-in-law's uh, chihuahua out in Hyde Park, uh, it drops a poop the size of a olive pit. And I forgot to bring a bag along, and out, of, out through the trees emerges a horse cop with his ticket book. He was all set to write me a ticket for this tiny little uh, speck of poop that I eventually I managed to find a bag. But then it's just as he's putting away his ticket book, his horse lifts his, lifts its tail and drops a mountain of poop. And I hand a bag to him expectantly that he would clean up after his horse, but for some reason it doesn't apply to him. Well, the chihuahuas are dogs, and dogs, whenever they see a, a, another dog's or another animal's uh, poop, they, they have to go mark it themselves as a, a territorial thing. And uh, so she's over there squatting over this enormous this pile of poop was actually twice her size. And uh, uh, suddenly uh, out of the woods come a bunch of hikers, and they look at this little dog, this huge pile of poop, and they look at me like, what, what? And I, I said, well, that's the third one today. I have to stop feeding her the cheap crap. <laughs> and then once they, they, they just start looking at me, and, uh, people sometimes don't even know when something's funny. That's what they, they didn't even laugh. They just kept on walking. And, and you know, they, the, in Toronto, you just look away. Don't make eye contact. <laughs> crazy man, crazy dog. You and law enforcement officers, uh, you don't necessarily show the deference that they expect. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I, I actually, well, it must be my Scottish side coming out of the Glasgow thing about uh, the rebellion against authority. And it's weird because I've done a lot of occupations and uh, hobbies that reply, re, I'm on the side of authority, as in I was an armored truck guard, I was a student minister, I was a uh, you know, karate instructor, actually taekwondo. And uh, at the same time, I don't respect authority that isn't earned. And so, uh, well, the, the, probably the one incident you're thinking of is the time I was in an armored truck on Bay Street, and someone had recently passed a rule that nobody could stop during rush hour, any, and nobody at all. And trouble with armored trucks is when our crew gets out, they're usually carrying a million dollars or something, and they can't exactly stand there with a bag of money between their knees while their truck circles the block waiting for me to come pick them up. So the rule was with the company, uh, if a, a policeman shows up, take the ticket. Like, it just uh, makes more sense for us to absorb the ticket than uh, get our crew killed. Problem being that uh, I can't open the door, that's the other rule. If uh, someone shows up in a police uniform, you have no guarantee that's really a cop. There's been many heists where someone's dressed up like a policeman. So there, sure enough, on a March day, I'm parked on Bay Street, and this little Dicky D uh, motorcycle pulls up with a police cadet. In those days, they still had police cadets. And he climbs out, and he tries to give me a ticket. But I won't roll down the window. First, he wanted me to roll down the window. The windows don't roll down. Then he wanted me to open the door, and I couldn't do that. So that, that became a, a tug of war between him and I. And I have to admit, I sort of was, uh, I, w uh, I wasn't mocking him, but I just followed the rule and I just worked him up into a lather of rage that uh, eventually caused him to climb up over the front of my truck like a pirate with a ticket in his teeth. Those are not short vehicles. Those yeah, are, that's... it's about, uh, yeah, I've estimated maybe 10, 15 feet up. He has to climb up over the hood. The portion there is like a, we had a ram bumper there that he could use like a ladder. But once he got on top of the hood, he had to crawl forward on his hands and knees on this dirty truck and jam the ticket up on my windshield wipers and then we're sitting there about uh, two and a half feet apart from each other with him looking in me looking out and uh that's <laughs> until a police sergeant came along and ordered him off the truck because once he got out there he refused to get off <laughs> so <laughs> but uh, I, I don't know if i'm a magnet for these kind of things too but uh, these uh, you know here's this police cadet suddenly thinks he's got the upper hand and then suddenly his sergeant catches him sitting on top of my uh with the hood of my truck like some little Buddha. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, so uh, the other, you know, there's been other instances like uh, the time I got pulled over by the ride program with a 40 pound turkey in a baby seat in my back car, uh, back of my car. And I had it bundled up. Uh, I was actually thawing this turkey. It was before Christmas and they, they see this tur turkey wrapped up. They thought it was a baby. And they were going to write me up because it was an old baby seat. It was, it was begun obsolete and they're going to write me up for having a passenger in an obsolete baby seat. Until they pull back the blanket and show him <laughs> the <a> ugliest <laughs> child ever. Yeah, and I was going to say, well, I already cut off his head, and I'm going to stick him in an oven two hours. So <laughs> <laughs> they'd probably just shot you on the spot. 
<laughs> well, they, they didn't give me an ice scraper. That was, you know, they, oh, that's that, you know. uh, God, man. For humor alone, they should have given me that. Uh, I guess if I was working Christmas Eve in the snow and the rain, I wouldn't have a sense of humor either. So I just uh, said, "Move on." Him. That's why I drove off and cooked my bird. Does it help you looking at the world with humor? I think. Well, it's for me. It's the only way to get through. Everything is funny. Uh, uh, yesterday I was staying in the post office line. We, uh, our post office in this area, uh, we have a very international community. And uh, we, there's like nine people in the lineup, and there's one long-suffering crook. It's in the shopper's drug mart. They, haven't got, they don't have a real post office anymore. And each person has some problem, and they're trying to explain to the clerk, you could be bilingual, trilingual, quadrilingual in this neighborhood, and it won't do you any good because there's like 150 languages. And while this poor clerk is trying to sort out, you know, how do I send, uh, there's this one guy trying to mail... Uh, a huge suitcase that looks like there's a body in it to Taiwan and the next person's from Ghana and he wants to get a money order and send it over but everybody is also has these little phones stuck in their ears and they're talking not only to the clerk but they're talking to somebody else and it's like being in a room full of uh, possessed people where and you just don't know you know are they talking to me or are they talking to you and uh, there's, uh, and there's uh, people humming it so it's just uh, the stories are all around you you know it's, it's, it's uh, hilarious, just a uh, human nature in general. I can probably sit for ten minutes at a bus stop and see a humorous story walk by. Uh, you know, it's just uh, a lot of people. Just I think part of the problem we have our heads down too much and we're too dead with our earphones and you know, our iPods and all that. Where you know, just sit around and just you know, take all the plugs out of your orifices and look around. It's it's all happening in front of you. Uh, well done. It's it's a lot of fun. Well, thank you. The book is My Life and Other Lies, Tales from the Writer's List. I've been speaking with the author and humorist Steve Pitt, and Steve Pitt's My Life and Other Lies, published by Bridge Ross Communications.